In Creo Parametric Sheet Metal Mode, from the Unbend drop-down menu, there is a cross-section driven unbend command, but you really don't need to use it, and later on I'll tell you why you really shouldn't use it. So a lot of times you want to unbend your part in order to see the flat pattern. If you take a look at this part model, I have a flat planar wall, then I have two flange walls. And if you take a look at these two flange walls, well, this surface or these surfaces are curving in more than one direction. This is not a ruled surface. And it used to be that if you wanted to flatten a surface like this, which was called undevelopable, you would have to use one of the other different options for an unbend like a transitional unbend or a cross-section driven unbend. Now though, you don't really need to because if I just go to the regular unbend command, it's able to flatten this. Let me delete that unbend command. Similarly, if I go to create a flat pattern, hey, it's able to do this as well. Let's turn off this feature actually delete it. And a while ago, Pro Engineer added the ability to flatten surfaces that had curvature in more than one direction. And as a matter of fact, let's jump over to Wildfire 5 for a second. Here I am in Pro Engineer Wildfire 5.0. This is the oldest version of Pro Engineer that will run on my Windows 10 machine. And it's even missing shading with edges. It's really weird working inside of here. So let's try to unbend this part. I'll go to the icons on the right hand side. Here we have the unbend command. When I click on that, it opens up the menu manager. I'm gonna do a regular unbend. Here are the options for transition and cross section driven. I'll click done. And then for fixed geometry, let's pick this surface and then unbend all and done. And when I do that, notice that it automatically creates a deformation area in order to figure out how to unbend this. So even a part like this with curvature in multiple directions could have been unbent way back in Wildfire 5.0. Okay, so back to modern day Creo. You can still unbend or make a flat pattern of surfaces that have curvature in more than one direction. But let's take a look at that command for the cross-section driven unbend. When I click on this, it hasn't even been updated to the modern interface because you probably don't need to use it or shouldn't use it. But let's take a look at how to use this. The first thing that you're going to pick are the edges that will remain fixed when you're doing the unbend. And you have a bunch of different selection methods like one by one, tangent chain, surface chain, or an intent chain. I'm just gonna pick this one edge here and then click the OK button and then done to get up the menu manager. And then there are two different ways to select the curve that's going to be used to project the cross section onto a flat planar surface. You can either select a curve or sketch a curve. Let's use select curve and then choose done. And now for the curve, I'm just, just gonna pick the same edge that I use to flatten things. So let's click okay and then done. And now it has an arrow pointing towards the side to be fixed. Well, that's pointing in the wrong direction. Let's click flip and then OK. And now all elements have been defined. I can click the OK button and now it flattens out that surface. And it looks pretty much like what I had when I used the unbend command or the flat pattern command. Now I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side, but I'm going to sketch instead of selecting the curve and show you how the sketch curve is going to result in different ending geometry. Let's go to the drop down, cross section driven unbend for the fixed edge. Let's pick this one and then OK and done. And this time I'm going to choose to sketch a curve and let's choose done. And now I need to either create a datum plane to sketch on or select a surface to sketch on. And then I'm gonna choose to face the right hand side of the screen. Let's choose this surface. So you see this really has not been updated in a while. Let's now add in some sketch references. I'm gonna grab a couple of vertices here that I can lock into. 
and then let's hit the little solve button and close let me go to my sketch view and now for the shape of my cross section I'm just going to draw a straight line between those two vertices so that looks good and again last time I used this curved edge now I'm just using a straight line let's click the check mark to get out of sketch mode I almost got tricked by the model dialog box being open on the screen once again it is pointing the wrong side of what should stay fixed let's use flip and OK and then OK and so now we have a much different shape. Let me select this surface and view normal to the screen. So again, what I chose to use for driving the cross section ended up in much different geometry. So that's how you can use the command. Now, maybe you want to keep this command in your back pocket for certain situations. But like I've mentioned in other different videos, if you are not going to be the person who's actually bending this metal, then I recommend just providing your sheet metal manufacturers with the fully formed version of the part and let them figure out what the flat pattern should be. Because in both of these unbends, it's basically making a guess, making an assumption, doing some kind of trick to say, okay, I, we think this is what geometry that you need in order to end up with the fully formed version but your sheet metal manufacturers are going to have a lot more experience with their machines and their materials because if you want to create a surface that has curvature in more than one direction you're probably going to be using some kind of special operation like hydroforming which you probably don't know that much about so again just leave it to the professionals there is the unbend using a cross-section command but hopefully you never have to use it 